Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today, we're going to be talking about Josh Howerton and his viral video about voting. So we're going to be talking about this, uh, giving some analysis on it. And this is a weird instance where I'm talking about Josh Howerton. I don't talk about him a whole lot. I've maybe written one article about him and it was somewhat favorable. But the, the problem with Josh Howerton is he's a woke pastor and yet he's saying something based. So it's kind of a strange story that I want to highlight for that reason. I'll, I'll get into uh, why I say he's a woke pastor in a second. But first, I want to let you know, Evangelical Dark Web is a Christian news gathering and commentary ministry. You can support our work over to evangelicaldarkweb.org slash join. That's our Patreon-like system. Um, we built our own because Patreon censors a lot of political content. So we want to kind of avoid that. Uh, we also have Winning Not Winsome, Ten Commandments of Spiritual Warfare. Uh, and then we have a free newsletter. All this is linked in the description below. Uh, but the least you can do is like this video, subscribe to the channel, to the podcast, if you are new. So with that said, let's uh, just give a quick introduction to uh, Joshua uh, Josh Howerton. Um, he's a pastor of Lake Point Church. And this is a weird church. Like, they don't have a statement of faith. Uh, they don't have their leadership mentioned on their website, at least not readily navigable. Uh, I can maybe toy around with the URL and find an old page that's not deleted. But they don't... This is a terrible church website for a multi-campus megachurch. Like, it's really not trying to attract serious believers to this church. Just something to note about the marketing of this church. Uh, I, I don't typically see churches with that. And then this is the extent of the church's history that it tells you, which I, that's really scant as far as details go. Another thing to note about Lake Point churches, you know, they're theologically liberal. They believe in female pastors, which is my threshold for being theologically liberal. Like if you support tearing out, you know, first Timothy two, uh, you're a liberal church. You, you've already crossed into theological liberalism. It's just a matter of how liberal are you? And that's a very good question to ask with Josh Howerton. How liberal is he? He already supports female pastors. This church has a lot of female pastors uh, preach at it. Uh, Priscilla Schreier is one of their top videos. Beth Moore has preached at their church before. Bianca Olsoff has preached at their church before. And she's cringe, by the way. So I don't know why they let her preach at the church, but they let female pastors and Christine Kane has preached at this church regularly, it seems. So they definitely use a lot of female pastors. Pretty cringe. Another thing to highlight is for a church that's been around this long, they sure do scrub a lot of their old stuff. Like, you know, what were they preaching in the, uh, May and June of 2020. That's pretty much scrubbed. And why is it scrubbed? Because Josh Howerton went woke. And, you know, he doesn't want people to know about that. Just saying. Just saying. So they, they've scrubbed a lot of uh, past sermon archives from their website. You know, this is the oldest uh, videos. Uh, this is the oldest. It doesn't go back very far. So anyway... And you see, they, it's not like they didn't have videos from five years ago, but they definitely scrubbed a lot of 2020 videos and quite interesting if you, I do say so myself. So with that said, there's this vi uh, clip that's going around from this recent sermon that he gave. And I think he's kind of remarked and joked about, well, I'm glad they're not going after me for jokes this time. They're actually going after me for what I'm saying in the sermon because people have tried to struggle session, uh, Josh Howerton. And you know what? He kind of, set him you know his his church is a liberal church female pastors very feminized so they've kind of set themselves up for struggle sessions you know along any sort of you know joking about marriage uh with the sex hate hating feminists that's my understanding of the recent controversies if you want to call them that with josh howerton now this has engendered some controversies so let's dive in if godly pastors won't lead their churches, Satan will be happy to. Now, let's apply this to this third institution, the institution of the state. Let me make something, uh, what I hope is obvious to us. 
if godly people won't lead their nation through voting, if godly people won't lead their nation, godless people will. God, the only people that are left become godless people. This is what the book of Proverbs means when it says this, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked rule, people groan. Thanks. So uh, just to let you know, this is not one continuous clip. There are, you know, splices and stuff like that. I didn't make this, but I do believe that this is a fair representative sample of the relevant content to discuss uh, in its full context as well. Uh, that being said, he's teaching sphere sovereignty, and you love to see that. And then he ended it by talking about, hey, we want good rulers in power, you know. And it sounds like he wants a Christian prince, or he believes that a Christian prince is an ideal. It's almost like Joshua, uh, Josh Howerton is, you know, a Christian nationalist, maybe. Mature Christians do not vote on superficial things. They don't vote on vibes. They don't vote on looks. We shouldn't vote on, he's got the same skin color as me, or she'd be the first woman president, or I've always wanted an orange leader. <laughs> we don't vote based on whether they give us, they had a delayed reaction around the room. It kind of <clears throat> we don't vote based on whether they give us the warm fuzzies. Why? Because a vote is not a Valentine. So some people, what Christians are doing right now is they'll look at these two candidates and they'll, they'll look at them and go, oh, well, I don't like their personality. Hey guys, can I say something? Personalities come and go, policies last a long time. Personalities come and go, policies last a long time. So I, I, that part is excellent. That part is really good. Uh, the idea that we should not vote based on mean tweets. We should vote based on policy. That is money right there, no cap, um, based, excellent job right there, because there are so many evangelicals, and this was kind of the thing back in 2020, we were memeing about this, you know, when Joe Biden took over, we were memeing about how, you know, yeah, the economy sucks, but at least we don't have mean tweets anymore, or yeah, you know, the Afghanistan withdrawal was a disaster, but no more mean tweets. No more mean tweets was a meme back in 2021. And that is what he's commenting on. That is the context for the words which he is speaking. Because, you know, he's not preaching this generically. He's not preaching this in a vacuum. He's preaching this based on a very specific context of Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. And that's the context that he's preaching. And he's not mincing words about it, but he's not really naming the candidates either. But he's clearly giving the evangelical audience permission to vote for Trump as though they needed it. But in, in any case, he's saying, yeah, you shouldn't vote for superficial issues. You should vote for policy. And that's how that that's how grownups speak. That's how grownups vote. Uh, the problem in this country in, in many ways is that we don't uh, we let a lot of superficial people vote. And, you know, we have very dumb politics as a result. Let me just say this. Don't vote for who you like most. Vote for who will lead best because a vote is not a Valentine. OK, number two, um, a, a ballot box is not a mailbox for you to send a message. Hey, guys, okay. there's no point in sending a message if nobody is reading it. There's no point in doing that. It, let me just, let's be very honest. The only thing that people read on election day is who won. That's the only thing people read. So the goal, the, 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 the goal isn't to make a point. The goal is to make a difference. Don't waste your chance to make a difference trying to make a point that nobody gets. Don't do that, okay? Now, number three, um, a selection. Is so this is... A good point as well. I, I do want to just disclose some personal, uh, you know, decisions that I've made. Uh, so one thing that I've decided to do, I live in Maryland. I am not voting for Larry Hogan. I, I just want to be very clear about that. I'm not voting for Larry Hogan. I, you know, think he's a terrible human being. He was terrible during lockdowns. Uh, and he's running on being pro-abortion. Like he's a Republican actively running on how pro-abortion he is. 
And then mostly it's just negative ads and stuff like that because he can't run on his record without hemorrhaging his own Republican base. Uh, so anyway, uh, when he says that a ballot is not a mail you know, message and the voting is not a mailbox and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I believe that if Larry Hogan becomes a senator, that's going to be worse for the nation than better. Like, I, I got to do my part as a Republican and not send Larry Hogan to the Senate where he can be a Republican on a national stage, left wing virtue signaling and then giving us no meaningful policy results. There's not a single issue of meaning that I agree with Larry Hogan on. Uh, there's no way he's going to be uh, staunch on illegal immigration. He's already pro-abortion. Uh, this dude signed a law that allows schools to transgender children and not tell the parents. He signed it. it didn't, they didn't override his veto. So there's no meaningful, and he's not going to vote for base Supreme Court justices. Let's be real. So there's no meaningful issue that I agree with Larry Hogan on. So uh, to give him a platform on a national level would actually be a to the detriment of my fellow believers in other states. That'd be a you know short-sighted victory. Uh, so those are my thoughts on that. So. Basically, I agree with him, uh, and I'm actually somewhat applying it, but not in the same way that he's suggesting. So those are my thoughts on that. Is not a sacrament. This is one of the biggest misunderstandings Christians have right now. A selection is not a sacrament. So that's a big churchy word. Here's what a sacrament is. A sacrament, it's a religious ritual like communion or baptism or marriage that it's really important not to let any impurity into. And like I said, uh, what, what Christians are doing right now um, is they're looking at our current candidates. And if you have any eyes open, and I'm just gonna say this, I need to be honest with you. Any Christian that's got a Bible open and their eyes open and their brain working ought to be looking at both of the candidates we're looking at and going, man, I see some flaws in, in both things I got in front of me, okay? And what Christians are doing is they're going, well, I just can't vote because there's no candidate I can fully support. And what they're doing is they're thinking that their selection is a sacrament, that somebody's gotta be totally pure for them to be able to vote for them. Can I just point this out? I'll only vote for somebody if I can fully support everything about them. Guys, you don't do that with any other choice in your life. Uh, the reason you come to this church, you might come to this church and be like, oh, I like the preaching, but the music's a little loud. Or more, you know, probably more likely, I like the music, but the preacher's a little annoying. I never know what he's gonna say. Right. Jesus is not on the ballot, guys, get over it. Jesus is not on the ballot, get over it, okay? So, and now, and this is, let me, let me go a layer deeper with this. This is this next part of the sermon. It, it, I need to teach you about this. It, it might be the most important part of the sermon. So here's how uh, you need to think about leaders. In the Bible, there's three. So, I want to pause right there because he's going on to a different section and we're flipping clips here. I thought that this is a pretty salient point. A lot of people view Trump as, you know, not good enough, not, you know, there's, I, I understand that there's definitely some instances where, hey, uh, you believe he screwed us over and, you know, what he did was unforgivable. You know, I, I completely respect that. I get that. Uh, or, you know, you think he's, you know, betrayed the cause or whatever. But there's also a number of people that, you know, his background and character were somehow beyond the pale, but they also voted for Mitt Romney and John McCain, who lacked character, integrity, and decent policies. Like, any decent any decent policies. So, I, there's a level of hypocrisy there. And when he says that you don't choose perfection in any other decision that you, you don't demand perfection in any other decision that you make. And then you all of a sudden start demanding it for president. He, he makes a very good point. So that, that was good too. He types of leaders. Um, he tolerated some forms of idol worship in his nation. He let golden calves be worshiped in Israel. He let this happen. Okay. So these three types of leaders exist, Josiah's, Ahab's, and Jezebel's, and Jehu's. Now, let me say two things on this. Number one, don't treat a Jehu like a Josiah. Do not ignore imperfections. Don't do that. But number two, 
We all want a King Josiah, but sometimes God uses a flawed leader for good purposes. And when you don't have the option of voting for a Josiah and your choice is between Ahab and Jezebel and Jehu, that choice is very obvious because a flawed leader used to do some good things is better than suffering under wicked leaders. It's better, okay? So we need to, under, we, now here's, here's the question, okay? Here, here's the next question. So if that's what voting's not, what is voting? And I, I want you to see this. Voting is, it's your power to pick the best available path forward. That's what a vote is. Voting is your power to pick the best available path forward. So definitely some meta commentary there where he's basically saying that Trump is Jehu, not Josiah. And that is more fair. I, I definitely... There's a lot of dumb Bible comparisons to Trump these days. I'm going to call out Steve Dace for comparing Trump to John the Baptist. You know, the guy that Jesus said was like the greatest ever. <laughs> the goat, the man goat, and meaning greatest of all time, not a, you know, any sort of pagan reference there. But Jesus complimented and lauded John the Baptist. John the Baptist called out sexual immorality and Steve Days compared uh, Trump to John the Baptist. A lot of people use David uh, because David was very flawed, but still was a man after God's own heart, which again, isn't really Trump. Uh, so I'm not, but the Jehu thing where he's like, and I'm not fully uh, memorizing the references because the way that the Bible judges kings especially once you get past David, uh, Saul, Saul, and Solomon. After that, it, it basically says they did what was good in the sight of the Lord or they did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the next sentence, if it's not how long they reigned and when they took over, it is, what did they do with the idols? The kings of Israel and Judah were judged based on their tolerance for idolatry and the gold standard was that they, you know, smashed the idols, tore down the high places, and, if applicable, uh, ended the prostitutes, the male prostitutes, which was gay, by the way, because I don't think women hire male prostitutes back then. Uh, so, you had a lot of stuff that they were judged on was their tolerance for idolatry. That was the number one thing. So, when people say that the government shouldn't, you know... Uh, the government should tolerate all religions publicly. It's like, nah, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible actually opposes that. Anyway, with that said, th there's a meta commentary that Trump is a Jehu, not a Josiah. And I think that's actually pretty helpful because a lot of people want to lionize Trump like he's this, this hero that he's fighting for America and stuff like that. I don't really think that's the case. Uh, I, I think he's, more someone who's blundering his way through and, you know, seems to be very lucky. Like, he is very lucky, providentially so, I might add. But, you know, hard to kill. Hard to kill. And I'm not encouraging any violence here. I'm just saying, like, you can't pin him down. He's just slippery. He's like, it's like trying to tackle Ben Roethlisberger in the backfield. He's very hard to bring down. Very hard. So, anyway... That's the first thing. And then he's reframing lesser of two evils as better of two options. Better, best of the available options instead of lesser of two evils. I think this is a very helpful way to frame voting because we are told, oh, if, we, if the choice is between the lesser of two evils, choose neither. Well, every choice is the lesser of two evils between two people on earth because no one is you know, completely good. Uh, no one is Jesus. Jesus is the good. So everything else is a choice between lesser of two evils, even between two Christian candidates, which I don't know if America has ever had two Christians uh, run against each other, uh, at least not in the last 150 years, probably. So those are my thoughts so far on this. I, I think Josh Howerton does a pretty good job here. Like, I am surprised 
that someone with his background is saying something as based as he's saying. So I, I love to see that, actually. I like to see that. Maybe there's some hope for this mega church in Texas because Dallas, Texas has had a pretty rough time this year. You got T.D. Jakes caught up with the P. Diddy stuff. You got uh, Steve Lawson, which we've covered a lot on this channel. Tony Evans, Robert Morris. It's been a pretty rough year for the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and they need some W's. They need the, the church needs some W's in this area, so you love to see that. I'm going to reward this. Uh, good job, Josh Howerton. Keep being based and get more based, please. Your church needs you to be more based uh, on other issues, but this was good. Uh, so that's all I got to say about that for now. My name's Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Web. Stay based. Christ is king, and we will catch you on the next one.